We all know the basic skills of education, reading, writing and arithmetic, but could it be that those skills are not as basic as we all think they are? The New South Wales Education Standards Authority has completed a report printed in the Sydney Morning Herald saying that students in high school are going backwards in writing and struggling to explain what they've learnt. But what is the cause? The New South Wales Education Minister Sarah Mitchell says it's the fault of the universities who aren't giving future teachers the skills they need to show kids how to write. Some teachers argue instead that it's the fault of a crowded curriculum and a lack of time available for writing skills. Now, we should tell the audience, shouldn't we, Paulina, that you and I have already had this debate. <laughs> <laughs> so this is revision. My argument to you on the phone very early this morning was my son, who's in Year 8, does eight hours a fortnight of English but seven hours a fortnight of tech in Year 8. And I went through and looked at tech and I remember when I did tech, weaving was a loom and weaving <laughs> and a pattern <laughs> and, an, and a blessed relief for, from, a, from a biro and a pen. But today, if we look up weaving textiles in the curriculum, they've got to determine the availability of materials, explore options to reuse materials, look at the cost, justify the use of materials, write a one-page word cloud on cotton, compile a meta-language glossary chart and do a project management plan considering workplace health and safety, which could only extend in weaving, Paulina, to not <laughs> tipping on your chair. Should they be spending more time in the English class? Well, I think, first of all, in New South Wales, the time is mandated by NESA. It is. So they have to do those hours. Um, um, in our particular school, we actually choose to do a little more in English, a little bit more in mathematics, and that's just a strategic decision we've made. Um, but I think there's so much more in tech these days. You think I'm 25 years out of date, don't I, you? I think you learn, you, you <laughs> use mathematics, you use marketing, you use um, creative skills, critical skills, and analytical skills. So tech isn't weaving anymore. Tech is a very complex, um, a very high level order uh, process. And I think our children actually rise to the occasion and are able to perform at those levels. It's a very different world to when you and I went to school. So 25 years later, it is um, these children are operating in a, such a complex world. They're processing everything that comes at them, um, digitally literate in a way we never even had to consider. Do you, th do you think that they are sliding? Because you have worked all over. You, you started your life at, at Boona High School. You've worked at, in, in Townsville with a range of kids of different backgrounds, socioeconomic, cultural, all the rest of it, and now here you are in Sydney. Do you think writing skills? I think writing skills are dropping off for some children and not for others. So, you know, um, some children who are in a privileged position and live in a home where their people read to them um, are, are way ahead. We know that, the evidence tells us that, it matters. Children who come from more vulnerable communities, they start behind the, you know, the eight ball. So we need to do more to support those children and so who are reading. struggling. And even in the classroom, we need to identify them very early on and we need to bring people in to work with them um, in the classroom one-on-one -on -one straight away. Kate Carnell, sometimes it is said that, um, that uh, the crowding of the curriculum, uh, as some say it, is in response to employer demands? Uh, look, I don't think that's the case because I have to say what employers want is they want reading, writing and arithmetic. <laughs> they want people who can add up and people who can write and people with, uh, with decent um, um, human skills, I'd have to say. The dilemma for me as an employer is how often I get staff that really can't write at all, that really can't put a sentence together, um, that their grammar is dreadful. And you know, in almost all jobs, you have to be able to express yourself in writing at some level. So it really causes an enormous problem if grammar seems to be, a, you know, a, a foreign language almost, um, and, and writing coherently is not a skill set that, that has been taught. So I think we've got to get back to basics. We learnt grammar in primary school. I don't know that happens now. We learnt what a sentence was. You know, we learnt all those things. Maybe we just have to accept that reading, writing and arithmetic are pretty fundamental. As are digital skills, there's no doubt. As are coding. You know, there's things that, things that do need to be in the curriculum now that didn't need to be then. But uh, 
I think we do try to put a whole lot of other things in that maybe aren't as necessary. Well, for more on this, we're joined by English teacher at Emmaus Catholic College, Mark O'Connor. And Mark, welcome to Friday Night Drum. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, somewhere on my desk, sir, is a piece of paper that tells me that you were the Teacher of the Year, Sydney's teacher named Australia's Favourite <laughs> in, in uh, 2012. So thank you very much for being with us on that score as well. Um, Thanks much. Year 9 students five months behind where they were in 2011. Do you think standards uh, are falling in high school in writing? It's an interesting question because working in a, a school that is focusing very heavily on improving writing, I wouldn't imagine that the kids are any worse off than they were in previous generations. I, I feel like some of the data that we're receiving is obviously from a set that is testing certain students, but not all students. My, my commentary would be that our best writers are just as good as writers from any other generation. Uh, and obviously, I think maybe the divide is a little bit uh, broader where we've got students struggling and you know, potentially reading at a, a year two level in year seven. And that, that's causing some difficulties in terms of the uh, differentiation required to teach those students. And what about the notion that, um, my notion, let's face it, Mark, that perhaps we should have a little less tech, not that tech isn't fantastic, but if you just did the tech in tech and not all the other uh, writing elements of it, you could have more time in front of, let's say, your English teacher, Mark O'Connor. I've got a, a really strong didactic warning for you around that because when you think about writing, writing is for purpose and mm -hmm. it is specific to what you're writing for. So if you rely on English teachers to just teach writing, then students are going to write um, probably in a verbose manner with too much sophisticated vocabulary. And let's be honest, in a scientific report, that would be totally unnecessary. So I've actually developed with a few other teachers a, um, a literary sort of... Uh, symbol that helps students with writing called PAL, which is around looking at the purpose and audience of a piece of writing and then adjusting language and structure accordingly. And when you think about even in your own role, how you write differently for different purposes, it would be ridiculous to think there's just one way to write. There's so many different ways that you would write. Uh, and we need you know, relentless patience with our students to make sure that they understand the difference between writing for different purposes. Viom, you started school in India and came to Australia in year four? That's right, yeah, year four. What was the difference between the two education systems in terms of learning to write? Yeah, so I mean, India had a far more kind of didactic uh, approach, I suppose, and I was very struck by the fact that there was this comparative de-emphasis on spelling and grammar uh, when I came to Australia. I thought it'd be much the reverse. And whereas, so I would actually say that when it came to the actual literal basics of the English language, I was taught those things far better uh, in India. That's not to, to kind of... To, <laughs> You're saying to, to, you, to you learnt more English in India than you did in Australia? You'll, you'll find this continually. In fact, if you speak to secondary school students who've come to Australia from India, um, uh, for them, that, that kind of divide between the education in English is, is just so stark. And I didn't even go to a particularly fantastic school for teaching English in India. And, you know, I'm guessing a lot of this is inherited from our kind of colonial past in India, perhaps. So what were you That's getting? You were getting grammar, you were getting sentences, you were getting adverbs and adjectives and all those things. That's that right. I didn't and learn. I can't tell you what they are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'm... I've kind of forgotten a lot of those now too, and they were kind of you know, laid on you know, year by year throughout our education. That said, there were some fantastic things about the English curriculum in Australia. I mean, there was so much more of an emphasis on exploring things and going with your instincts. And I remember library sessions back in India it, it, when I was in grade four there, it was sit in this room, here's a book, read it for 45 minutes. Mm. And you come to Australia and library is just this kind of fun period and pick any book you like, as many as you like, you don't like it, switch to another one. And uh, really, I learned that, that English, uh, studying English in Australia was more kind of like a study on almost kind of literature and the forms and the different genres there are. And discussions in class were often you know, about kind of culture and, and philosophical values, etc. And, and that was all great. But I, th I think that the thing that I really felt shortchanged on by the Australian system is yeah, that's all fine to have this kind of high level education I I about English. But when it actually comes down to, to writing, um, if you don't have those very basic necessarily necessary tools, you really can't contribute because you don't have the confidence as a student or as a young person to write. 
And this is, you know, we're talking about everything from in the workplace to a letter to the editor to, you know, for your own purposes, if you're writing for, for your own kind of fun. So I think there is like genuinely a place for some fundamentals to, to, to give people the confidence to, to engage in, in the social conversation. Back to the fundamentals, Pauline. Well, I have to say, I have been an English teacher for 30 years and I have taught grammar and adverbs and punctuations and full stops everywhere along the way. So this idea that we don't teach children to write is a furphy because we do. And if you go into any school I've been at, public, state, Catholic, we teach children about grammar, punctuation and spelling. I do think children are probably on devices a little more and reading less. I think reading is actually the key to being able to learn to write properly. And in fact, we did a survey on our girls when they were on during COVID and their reading rates increased exponentially. And so I think it's really interesting that when you're perhaps a little bored or at home and you've got some quiet time and a little less stimulation from everything else going on in our world, children actually do turn to books and read. And for me, reading is the key to writing and to learning and to success at school. It is the actual, the basic building block. So, um, I, you know, getting back to basics, I find that a little bit irritating because <laughs> we have been yeah. teaching this forever in every single school I've ever been in. So uh, we have been at the basics for a long time and the creative and everything else. Mark, what makes the difference? You've got some stories for us of um, young men and women who have managed to sort of turn around their ability to write? What makes the difference? It, it's really uh, using high yield strategies that really make a difference in students' understanding of what they need to improve. So it, I, I agree, um, it's very generic to say get back to basics. It's so much more important to uh, personalise the learning for a student, use annotated samples like uh, think aloud where you actually explain or give what you're doing in your own writing so that they can then model their writing off of that. Um, and really sort of personalising the feedback to the individual student about what they need to improve. I've got students in my advanced English class that I use word banks with, uh, and some I would never think about a word bank. I've got students who uh, I teach a structure for a paragraph, and some I don't teach a structure for a paragraph. So I think it's really on a need basis where the students are, and really using a strategy that's going to help them improve in their writing. And when we target that, we are, in my experience, at a range of different schools, I've seen some really drastic improvement when you directly teach the student where they're at, not generally teach everyone the same thing. Claire, what was your experience of English at school? You've got a, you've got a great turn of phrase, you're a good writer. Well, I obviously ended up a journalist, so writing was clearly my favourite subject at school. So my experience was probably a little bit above the, the norm. I was a voracious reader right from a young kid. And I, and I really think that that helped me a lot because it helps me now. When I first started as a cadet in journalism, I thought I knew everything there was to know about journalists. I'd uh, Writing, rather, I'd done a degree. I'd done high school. But... I had no idea how to write for the style that was required and I had to read a lot. That was basically reteaching myself and I think that it's really important not to underestimate that connection and, and, and maybe as well I have this distinct memory of going into sort of the early years of high school and learning a foreign language and having to be taught what a, the object and the subject of a, a sentence was and honestly probably that was the first time that those labels had ever been attached to writing in a sentence structure that I can recall and it was in the context of learning another language so I think to an extent in the classroom sometimes the the signposting of those basic mechanics sometimes does fall away a little bit to the detriment of the students but maybe more importantly having those broader discussions getting involved in reading being exposed to good writing knowing how to talk about it and how to seek help is is just as important it can be you know my experience in in the English classroom was probably very different to some of my fellow students who weren't interested in writing and therefore weren't going to be hanging off every word of the teacher. So meeting the student where they're at is probably the, the best way forward. Um, let's finish this segment, Pauline. I want you to tell me, <clears throat> there's been a lot of huffing and puffing about what are these students learning at university when they go um, to become teachers and all sorts of culture wars. Let's leave that to one side. Tell me the story of um, what happens when you are a young teacher and you were a young teacher at Boona High School and you found a mentor to, to mentor you as a teacher? I was very fortunate. Um, I think we, we do all we can at university, but it's actually in the classroom where you learn. And um, 
I always wanted to get everything right that I did. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, marking a year 12 paper is a very serious thing for a young teacher. Um, so there was a delightful fellow in my, in my staff room, um, a fellow called Dick Collier, delightful man, and he became my mentor quite accidentally. Um, in the same staff room as me and so we would pour through papers together and he would help me to identify what you know the the kind of feedback that was going to be most instructional for that that student um, and that was just two years of the most valuable learning that I ever did to have someone to moderate those tasks with me on the job to have that person with the wisdom and that literacy knowledge to be able to help direct me so he absolutely shaped um, those early years for me as well and I think that all young teachers need to have that person um, in a school with them to mentor them right down to the nitty-gritty of marking Mm. Yeah. And that's interesting because the, the, the part of that survey was that nearly half of teachers, I think in New South Wales who were surveyed, felt ill-equipped to teach writing. So I guess that's part of the professional development you're Absolutely. talking about.